guys, what's up? Um, today we're gonna talk about a little red dot from Fiaci. This is the V30, I believe it is. Yes, the V30 red dot. Let's get into it. But this was sent to me to review by these people. Um, so take what I say with a grain of salt if you have to. But what I have always told anybody that ever sends me anything is if the product's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. I'm not gonna sugarcoat stuff. If it's great, it's great. And if it's bad, well, I'll give you a chance to fix it, but we'll see. All right, so this is pretty much a oh, unboxing, first look impressions kind of thing. I kind of already opened it up and kind of looked at it. So, spoiler alert, a little bit. Uh, but it's basically just a red dot sight. This is your standard looking kind of, if you threw in another brand like a Bushnell TRS-25, that size, or an Aimpoint um, brain fart, I can't remember, the, 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 the flagship of Aimpoint, right? The, the, these, these smaller red dot sights, not a micro red dot, but these are the standard red dot size uh, sights. Um, Hollison has a bunch, bunch of different companies have a bunch of sights in this size, so this this fits that category of things, all right? It comes with a couple batteries, uh, the hardware you're gonna need to install everything. It, like I said, it comes with a couple batteries. Sometimes these things don't come with batteries, so that's nice, but it comes with the hardware and stuff you need. Cleaning cloth, comes in a nice little plastic case thing. A riser, right, kind of a skeletonized lightweight riser, and a low profile mount, right? The low profile mount is already installed, and then it has the riser on here. It also comes with some lens covers. This is kind of cool, uh, but some little lens covers so you can cover everything up, but they are, if I can get it, well, let's put it on, maybe that'll help put these guys on, then you can flip it up, right? So some flip up lens caps. So that's kind of cool if you got, <clears throat> you know, dusty, windy, not windy, dusty or rainy environments, muddy environments, this could kind of make sense, especially for storage to keep your lenses cleared up and everything. On the end there, we also have a kill flash. Does that make sense? Ah, maybe you can see that, maybe you can't, but a kill flash, right? Uh, or a, a flash kill, whatever it's called. Uh, but a webby looking, um, honeycomb style looking filter on the end here so that when you're looking straight through the optic you can see everything just fine but if you turn the optic just slightly it helps the the sunlight uh or the glare not bounce off of the lens and kind of reflect and be shiny and bright it kind of helps kill that flash kill flash that's why it's called that um i do believe that's removable so you could remove that if you want because if you're going to be running the end caps or the uh, the covers on there anyway you could just run that thing on there and not worry about that Ah, at all. If I can get it to go on there. There we go. You don't worry about that at all. So now it's all covered up anyway, and then whenever you're using it, there you go. Then then you can see kind of what's going on there. All right, so let's go ahead real quick. We're going to take off this small little, the low profile mount. We're going to put on the riser because we're going to install this guy on this little 22 we got right here and see kind of how it co-witnesses with a standard A2 front sight gas block and your standard sight heights all right so let's do that real quick all right now they did it looks like include what are all these pieces for so okay so you got two different allen keys or, or an allen key and a star bit basically or a torx bit torx bit that looks like that's going to be for your adjustment screw on the side or not your adjustment screw, but your your torque down how do you how do you tighten this 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 mount down to the actual firearm to take off the mounts it looks like they chose to use an Allen key, right? So we're gonna go ahead and take these guys off. This comes pre-installed with the low profile on here. We're gonna go ahead and take this guy off. Looks like these are not on here very tight. So make sure if you get one of these that you check and make sure everything is tight before you go to shoot and everything. Um, but it does look like you have two full sets of screws. So they didn't just give you one set of screws and expect it to um, you know, in case you accidentally strip something out, they didn't just give you one set of screws. You got two full sets of screws. <clears throat> All right, so we got the old mount off. All right, we're going to get the new mount and put it on. Before we put it on, we're going to go ahead and put some Loctite on these holes here. This is a very, very overlooked thing a lot of times. Um, even by manufacturers, sometimes the manufacturers don't do these. Sometimes they expect you to, you know, to switch stuff around and see what you like before you lock stuff down. But in general, these should come Loctite um, or with some Loctite. And if they don't, get you a bottle of Loctite. This will last you forever. We're going to put a little dab of Loctite on each one of these holes. That way we don't have these screws accidentally coming out under recoil when we don't want them to. All right, just a little bit will do you. Don't go overboard. Um, you can easily put on way too much. We're going to go ahead and put this guy on. It's got a notch right here in the middle. 
right? It's kind of a recoil lug that coincides with this slit right here on the bottom side of the optics. So make sure those line up. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and start installing our screws. All right, now I don't see any torque specs that I'm supposed to follow as far as how tight these things are supposed to be, but it looks like these are screwing directly into an aluminum sight, so I'm not gonna over tighten them. I'm just gonna get them nice and snug, just good enough, and leave it at that, and let the let the Loctite do its work and, and not work itself out. All right, and it looks like there are actually two extra screws. So you have four complete screws for your low profile mount, and then four screws for your for your riser. You also have two extra screws, just in case something, I guess, happens. I hope that doesn't mean that they expect these screws to strip out. But uh, just in case something happens, or you lose one, you drop one, that happens a lot, especially when you're dealing with little screws. So that's nice that they have extra screws for you to have. So let's put this stuff back away. All right, we're gonna go ahead and back out our, um, our screw that locks everything down for the sight. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy on. I'm going to, again, put a little bit of Loctite on this guy. It's just a good thing to do. It doesn't look like these come with any Loctite on the screw itself. If it did, it'd have some blue, uh, some blue looking stuff on the end there. Um, sometimes different color, generally it's gonna be blue though. Blue or red is your general colors. But we're gonna put just a little bit on there. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. We want it to lock on and not come off under recoil or vibrations, but we don't want it, we, we want it to come off when we want it to come off, you know? We're not permanently attaching this guy is what I'm trying to say. Make sure we point this guy in the right direction. The red side, so you can see the red side with the reflective coating on it, that's always gonna go on the front and the clear looking side, that's gonna go back towards you. So I like to install mine on the very front of the upper receiver. As far forward on the upper receiver as I can go. And when you attach these things and when you mount them, there's usually, even with high quality stuff, you're gonna have a little bit of slop inside um, the Picatinny rail that you're in. I'll try to show you if I can. If you look real close, I should be able to have some movement. See that movement right there? That's not necessarily a bad thing. That is generally across the board how it's gonna be. But what you wanna do is you wanna push forward all the way forward so that the mount is all the way forward inside that Picatinny slot, not backward, but forward. And then you wanna tighten everything down. The reason you wanna do this is under recoil, it's going to try to force that optic or whatever you might have as far as an attachment in those Picatinny rails, it's gonna to try to force that attachment forward. And if you already have the optic or sight or whatever mounted all the way forward within that Picatinny slot, you're not gonna have a whole lot of shift and zero, right? But if you have that, if you have that optic just floating somewhere inside that slot, inside that slop, right? Then it's gonna be a little bit harder to zero because you might be zeroed one day, you shoot a whole bunch, and then you go to try to shoot, you know, a bullseye later and it's it's shifted, that's because that optic shifted forward. If you already mount it and lock it down on the forward position you'll be good to go. All right, so again, making sure I didn't over tighten it. There's no torque spec, but it looks like we're screwing into aluminum most of the time, so I don't want to strip anything out. So basically, that's what we got right there. That's kind of a uh, that's kind of a look at what we have. Let's see if this guy doesn't line up. He lines up pretty well for me. I know it's not gonna come over across on camera, um, especially the way this thing, the camera's focusing and everything. Um, but as far as a, being a co-witness, I can definitely see my irons and I can definitely see my red dot through the sight. And if I'm gonna be storing this thing or carrying it around, I could close everything up with those, um, uh, with those dust covers, basically is what they're called. And if I want to, I should, I should have done this earlier, I should be able to take off the front cap, and if I installed or reinstalled that kill flash on the end, if I just reinstall this guy back on here, there we go. So now I have a kill flash underneath my flip up cover. So now, even with all this glare and stuff, there shouldn't be any shiny glare coming off of the of the front lens because that kill flash should be cutting down on that on that uh, that reflection basically. So just a couple little different pieces of information about this site. I'm just gonna read it straight off their website. Um, I don't have everything memorized, it's not how I roll. But it's a two MOA dot, which is good. Um, the smaller MOA dot you can get, that generally means you can get a better zero, you can be a little bit more precise. And if you find that you need the dot to be bigger, just bump up the brightness settings and it will bloom. It will make the, the reticle look bigger, easier to see and cover more area. Um, speaking of brightness settings, it, look, it looks like they have 10 different brightness settings 
eight of them being daytime brightness settings. And it says two of them are night vision settings. Now, I can't verify that because I do not have night vision. I can't verify that one way or the other. I can say that it has 10 visible um, settings, right? So you can go as low as you can go, right? And you have a very, very, very dim red dot. And then you have 10 different increments where it gets brighter and brighter and brighter until it just stops getting brighter. It just gets, it peaks out at a brightness, right? Um, it says it says it has an auto on auto off. Um, I have yet to test that. I haven't tested that yet. But it says that if you leave the leave the light on or the light leave the red dot on, then within an hour or at an hour, if if there's no movement, the the optic will turn itself off. And then after it senses some kind of movement, then it will turn itself back on. All right? If that's true, that's really really cool. I have yet to test that. We'll we'll test that in the actual review later. Make sure that actually happens. Comes with low profile uh, base mount and a riser. That's good. Um, certified to 800 G's, whatever that means. I don't measure G's and stuff. I'm just gonna put this guy on a 22. If it works well and survives on a 22, I might put it someday on a full size AR-15. But for me and my experience, I'm just gonna run this guy on a 22, and I think it'll, I think it'll, it, it'll work well in that case. All right, guys. So that's a quick, down and dirty kind of an install, first impressions, unboxing of the Fiacci V30. Um, I, I'm excited about it. I think it'll work well in this little 22. Um, time will tell for sure, 100% for sure. And we will get out and shoot it and test it and see what we can do with this thing. I'm not really looking to torture test this guy. If he survives and he works well over time on the 22, I may stick it on an AR-15 and just kind of see how it, see if it holds zero, all that kind of stuff. But in my experience and for, for my purposes, I think this, I think it'll work well on like airsoft guns. Um, 22s this is a 22, very light recoiling firearm, not a heavy use kind of thing, not a, um, you know, live or die kind of a firearm, just a, a general purpose kind of fun gun. Um, that's where I'm sticking this guy. But if you got any questions about the V30, please let me know. Um, I will do my best to answer those questions if you submit them before the actual review. Um, and if you do submit the questions before the actual review, I'll do my best to answer those questions in the actual review, if that makes sense. Kind of give you some extra extra answers, extra in-depth answers, as it were. Um, if you want to check this thing out, there should be an Amazon link below. I'm not sure if that's an affiliate link or not. If it is, cool. If it's not, cool. It's no skin off my nose if you want to buy one of these things, right? This was sent to me. I should have said this in the very beginning, but this was sent to me to review by these people. Um, so take what I say with a grain of salt if you have to. But what I have always told anybody that ever sends me anything is if the product's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff. If it's great, it's great. And if it's bad, well, I'll give you a chance to fix it, but we'll see. Um, in this case, it is what it is so far. We haven't even shot it, but we're going to test it and see how it works. All right, y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, and everything, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.